Hello there, today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, the locations and drops inside of the Thousand Needles. I will just quickly apologise as over Christmas I have had a bit of a cold so my voice kind of got shot and it's not quite back to normal yet, but it should be back to normal soon hopefully. There are 7 rares in Thousand Needles, so without further ado, let's crack on with it. Harb Foul Mountain So first up we have Harb Foul Mountain, a level 27 rare that hangs around at the top of Dark Cloud Pinnacle. An interesting thing about Harb Foul Mountain is because he spawns so close to the way up to Dark Cloud Pinnacle, you'll probably find that this guy is almost always dead. In fact, I've never ever seen this guy in the original um, up to Rathalich guy, never ever encountered this rare at all, presumably because he's always dead. I'm not sure if he actually spawns on other maces in Dark Cloud Pinnacle, I think he just spawns on this one. And if you kill him, you will get a random green. There's nothing really interesting about him. The model is quite cool, actually. I've never seen that Tauren model before. And the mace is pretty cool looking, but he won't drop it. He will just drop a random green for you. So, oh well. Gibble Snake. Up next we have Gibblesnake, a level 28 kobold that hangs around in Windbreak Canyon. Gibblesnake can spawn in a few very slightly different places, primarily where there's all these cloud serpents, so expect that this guy is probably dead as this area is quite popular for the quest to go fetch the alien egg on the Horde side. I don't think there is an alliance version of that, but on the Horde side I definitely know there is, and this guy's not particularly hard to kill either. If you can kill him though, you will get a random green between level 20 to 25, I believe. His respawn time, about 4 hours or so. Achilos the Banished Up next we have Akalos the Banished, a level 31 centaur that roams around just below High Purge. You'll know this guy as he primarily just walks by himself with his three pack hounds, and the three pack hounds can make your life fairly difficult as a solo player. They are around about level 24 so they are much lower than he is, but obviously having three surround you and him at the same time can be quite an issue, so I would definitely recommend trying to CC this guy. He doesn't have a particularly large amount of health, He does. I think he has more than the average level 31, so that's probably something to denote. He also has a thunderclap ability as well, so if you're melee you should probably watch out for that. If you kill him you will get a random green between the level 26 and 30 I believe, as he's a level 31, so it puts him in the higher loot bracket. Heart Razor. Up next we have Heart Razor, a level 32 elite wyvern that roams around in a small area in High Perch. To get to this area in High Perch, you're going to have to go up the normal route and then hang a left and keep going and there is another slight dirt road that goes up through a little canyon and out into this area where there's a couple more wyvern and heart razor. There is also a quest around here as well for horde so it's an escort quest to take you out of the zone. I definitely recommend clearing these things beforehand as the quest NPC has a pretty low amount of health and has a tendency to get themselves in all sorts of scuffles so if you can sort that out beforehand excellent. Hot Razor himself has a significant amount of health, doesn't tend to do a lot of damage, so if you can slow them down or just kind of tank them through, um, absolutely great. But yeah, a lot of health for a 32 Elite. And if you kill him, you will only be rewarded with a random green, unfortunately. So you kind of expect this guy to drop some unique loot. Blizzard obviously forgot to add the loot in for this guy, so they just gave him a random green. The random green should be between level 26 to 30, though, because he's in the higher loot bracket. Vile Sting.
Up next we have File Sting, a level 35 elite Scorpid that hangs around in the western portion of the Shimmering Flats. You'll find this guy if you look for the tent and cart that seems to be all burnt out and abandoned with a load of other scorpions. This guy is kind of blue and grey so he's pretty easy to spot as the other ones are kind of black and red. And the most interesting thing about this guy is the insane amounts of damage he does. He has a fair bit of health because he's a 35 elite anyway. But the primary reason you want to stay clear of this guy is he has a kind of a poison that he can apply to you that does 350 damage or around about 350 as well as a damage over time poison as well. So he also hits quite hard on melee attacks anyway. He's definitely a high damage rare. The problem with this is he doesn't actually drop any unique loot. He will just give you a random green semi-appropriate to kind of your general level. And that's really disappointing because this guy is a lot of trouble to go to to kill. You definitely can't solo him. So in my opinion, I'd probably skip this one. It's not really worth it. I and I, the Invincible. So with a disappointing rare like Vile Sting, you may expect other rares in the Shimmering Flats to be equally disappointing. However, this is not the case. Up next we have Ion Eye the Invincible, a 37 elite basilisk that hangs around in the eastern portion of the Shimmering Flats. This guy is the best rare in Thousand Needles, believe it or not, I'm going to show you why now. He has a lot of health, and he doesn't do any particularly strong amounts of damage, and he's a very slow mover. This means he is more than solable if your class has some sort of CC, which is absolutely phenomenal news considering what he drops. This guy doesn't have any special abilities, and when you kill him, he will give a 70% chance to drop the Blade of the Basilisk, an absolutely phenomenal tanking weapon for low level players. Defense is definitely underrated and very rare on low level items and this would probably suit a tank all the way up to maybe level 45. Got a reasonably fast speed which makes it ideal for warriors to generate aggro and rage from and yeah overall it's just an amazing weapon it will sell for an absolute fortune and the model is amazing it's like nothing I've ever seen before I've never seen this model before in game and I was so happy that it actually dropped on my character absolutely love it. If you're in the area, definitely go and check for this guy. His respawn time is between 12 to 18 hours, so he should be up at least once a day. Silithid Ravager And last but not least, we have the Silithid Ravager, a level 37 Silithid that hangs around in the Rustmall dig site. This guy hangs around in the same place as the Rustmall dig site every single time, so he should be pretty easy to find. This guy is on a respawn timer of between 2 to 3 hours, so plenty of opportunities for you to find him and kill him. This guy, even though he's an elite, does have a lot of health for some reason, and I'm not really sure why. He also does a fair bit of damage, I'm not going to say it's an extreme amount because it isn't, so you may have some difficulty if you can't kite him around, but if you can, good for you, excellent, do that, and you might be able to solo him. As for drops, this guy has 20% chance to drop the Silithid Ripper, and a 10% chance to drop the Cracked Silithid Carapace. The Carapace will give you a quest on Horde that will allow you to acquire the Bleeding Crescent or the Dryleaf Pants. If you don't get the Silithid Ripper, you will just get a random green. So overall, pretty good. I'd say this is worth doing. As is the usual now, here is a map of all of the rares and their locations in Thousand Needles. I've also included a link to a version of this in the description below. That about wraps up the rares, their locations, and drops inside a thousand needles. Overall, everything except Iron Eye and the Silithid Ravager, I would say I'm not worth getting. Iron Eye is an absolutely amazing rare, and the loot definitely shows for that. I think this is one of those zones where if you're questing in the area, it's definitely worth doing, but aside from that, it's probably not worth checking out unless you're looking for that specific tanking sword. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more of these in the future, subscribe to the channel.